All right, you sons of bitches. So today we are going to talk about guard pulling. And I know there's a lot of opinions out there about guard pulling. I myself, in my younger days, have expressed some views on guard pulling that I don't necessarily stand by anymore. Okay? If, if you're going to guard pull, though, let's do it right. Okay, let's fix this shit real quick. So I want to talk about the different ways I see people pull guard. Okay, and how they're supposed to pull guard and kind of the concepts behind it. First off, everybody that's at a low level pulls guard kind of like this. They learn a few details and they forget the important ones and then they go from there. Okay, so you have to make contact to pull guard. I think this is a good rule. I actually think you should have to make contact for longer than 0.01 seconds before you can pull guard. But that's beside the point. I have to have contact. It doesn't matter where, and I have to maintain that contact until I am on the ground. So I couldn't do this and let go halfway through. I would have to stand back up and hope the ref, hope my opponent's not Brazilian, and that the ref is not Brazilian because he might hit me for the penalty instantly, okay? So I, what I need to be doing here is getting some solid attachment, okay? I don't want to do this kind of guard pull in the gi, okay? Here. First off, not only is it... Um, an, an incredible waste of an opportunity because my guard poles should be the initiation of a sweep or they should lead me to a strong position. But the physics of um, a guard player in the gi versus a guard passer, if I'm on my back or if I get put on my back like this, he gets to make first contact in me almost every time because my legs are more exposed, you know? And the more I retract them to try to defend them, the easier I am to rotate because now I'm connected to my arm, my hips. So anything he does to my legs will become rotational energy to the rest of my body, okay? And you're in for a bad time if a good guard passer gets a contact first because I go to grab the grips back, he's already passing me, okay? Someone that's good doesn't grab you and then make weirdly intense eye contact. Other good grapplers don't do that. <laughs> I do that sometimes, but that's, again, beside the point. Hey guys, hit that like and subscribe button down at the bottom and maybe even the notification bell. The metrics show that this actually is an effective tactic to grow the channel. I hate doing shit like this, but I do like getting good jujitsu out to more people. So don't forget. Okay, so giving up that first grip on the legs, it, it, you can't do that. You can't get away with that. You can get away with that in your local gym. You can't get away with that with timing, okay? So it's important that we don't get ourselves in those situations. That guard pole is completely fucking out, okay? And the other problem with that is if Bird is paying attention, he's going to start passing me aggressively because this is an opportunity. He can tell me to start to pressure me. And you actually see people that are really good at guard passing, um, sorry, guard retention, they get in a, a problem situation all the time from this, right? They're used to having the initiative in their favor and not getting pressured by people, okay? But a good guard passer, once they get in, they keep chaining on you and pressuring you until you're either so exhausted you fuck up and get a sleep up, or they get far enough ahead on something they can finish the pass. And I meant to say pass earlier. <laughs> so that guard pull is out, all right? The only time a guard pull like that is acceptable is if this is D1 Wiltsy Bird. And if I let him, if I stay standing for more than half a second, he's gonna be able to touch my legs. But that kind of guard pull is gonna look like this. I'm either going to aggressively get my grip first and get down, okay? So it's gonna look like this. Like, just so I can not get taken down by someone who's a really, really good shot wrestler, okay? But I'm still going to focus on the mechanics that are going to make this important, which is going to be getting my hips close to bird, getting my defenses up right away so my legs can't just get thrown side to side with the momentum, okay? Um, whatever grips you get, you can play off of differently. Like, if I get this collar, I kind of have different options than if I get the cross collar, okay? But on both of them, you see, the first thing I do is get my foot up on his hip, but not extended on his hip. Extension is weak. The end range of motion here, you don't have any power anymore. It's easy to just take it off to the side and pop it off. Okay, so you can overextend. And so that's why I need to get my hips closer to Bird, pull him into me, and then keep a cross pressure between my pull and my push where my leg is still bent. Because now if he tries to pop that off or jump around or anything like that, I can actually react to it, okay? And then again, this, this other foot can hook, 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 it doesn't matter. This is my initial pull, it's just to somewhere like this, just to a safe pull, okay? And then he has to touch me, 
But that touch with me loaded up like that isn't going to be a pass right away because he still has to deal with that. So this is actually just a free grip for me. So that is going to be the quick jump in pulls. Okay. Lucas Lepre does this fantastically. Every time he pulls guard, it's almost a sweep. All right. Whether it's a cross collar or a same side collar, I would love to have sleeve grips, but it's hard to get without him getting a grip back on me. And if I let him grab me first, he's going to be doing something. Okay, so that's all. We don't do that. We don't fuck with that at all. So it's whatever grips I can get. Notice I'm also, I'm in a fucking stance, guys. I go on about this all the time. Get in your fucking stances. Don't do this. Um, if he touches my legs, shots are better in the gi than they are no gi. Because him touching my pants means I don't get away. Okay? So it's dangerous. So I have to be in a stance. And you have to learn how to shoot grips out from A to B and not fumble. So you have to practice doing this. Find your range where you know I could reach out and grab it and not put to turn it, okay? Because in that time where I'm fucking around trying to get it, he gets my sleeve maybe, breaks my grip, he shoots on me. Those are all just wasted motions that are giving him an opportunity to do something or at least mentally get ready for it. So get in your stance, okay? Hopefully he's in a stance too, okay? Otherwise, maybe you should just shoot on him, all right? Find your range of motion or your range of uh, attack, you know, where you feel comfortable punching out and grabbing something, okay? And then the second you grab it, don't, don't pause. Don't look into his fucking weird eyes, <laughs> okay? You grab, you go. And again, you notice that this leg is up kind of defensively. He can't go around this way. He can't really go around the other way because my foot, hear me? Yeah. My foot is kind of angled to the outside of his hip a little bit here. Okay? And I'm putting downward pressure and I didn't fully extend. Okay? I kept my knee bent and I kept a, a cross pressure here. Now I'm going to show you guys what you need to do to get some initiation going. Okay? So that is just a generically safe pull. Your pull should be your offense though. So from the same side collar grip, when I go to jump in and pull, I'm trying to make sure my hips get very, very close to bird. Okay? And you notice I put my hand on the mat there. I want to try to avoid that. Um, but if I, like, I, I would rather have a sleeve grip or something else, okay, or be chasing that right away, but I have to get my hips under him, so it's okay for me to kind of tap the mat with it, but if I could get a different grip with it, that's what I would do. So, I'm going to shoot in on Bird with my hips, okay, and I'm going to elevate him, okay, I don't care if I sweep him, elevation lets you decide where you're going to go next, because the whole time he's in the air, it is very hard for him to apply pressure to you, okay. So I can go to close guard, I can transition to daily Hiba, I can get him to grab me, I can circle him lasso, I can strip his grip to spider guard, right? We have all those options. We just can't pause and think about it. We have to know what guard do I like to play, okay? If I like close guard, jumping close guard is not always the best option on someone strong and good and tough because they'll just hold you up, okay? Or you'll have to get them off balance before you jump and if they're a D1 wrestler, they don't really get off balance. You know what I mean? Or they're going to take you down sooner than you can get a good guard jump. So the best time to get close guard in the gi is when their hips are off the ground. So this, then this works out perfectly for this. You know, if I reach out and grab, okay, I'm getting ready to jump my hips into him and get my foot loaded up. And then I'm going to immediately play a lift. And then as soon as he's coming down, both my legs are going to shoot past him. And he's going to fall into my close guard. So I'm here, I'm going to jump because I don't want to reach out for this right now either. Okay, I know I can get this one and if he reached for me right now, I might take a second to grab this. But again, I don't want to pause. You need a buzzsaw everywhere. It's a mentality. Do it from your guard, do it from your wrestling, do it from your passing. Okay, so here. Okay, so again, here I'm going to get in under him. And this is just one grip, one collar grip. Now we can do something. So if I get a cross collar, you can immediately go De La Hebo with it. Okay, and that's fun because you don't have to stop there. All right, it's actually a, kind of my number one complaint about mid to low level De La Hebo players. They think it's a position you can hold, and I don't. I think there's too many guard passing options. It's too easy to pressure out of, um, easy to shut down a lot of the sweeps there when you have your bearings and you're ready. Okay? 
It is not easy to do that when they're instantly in it and going. The way I'm gonna do this one, okay, I get my cross collar, and I'm gonna make sure I get my hips close to this shin. Okay, so I'm not gonna go into the middle anymore. I'm going into here, okay? If I could get my nutsack on top of his foot, <laughs> he is fucked, all right? So, same thing. See, so yeah, I just get the one grip, I just get the cross collar. I'm gonna shoot my hips in, immediately start to invert off of that with the hook. I'm just gonna knock him off balance. If all I do is knock him off balance, that means he didn't get an opportunity to instantly pass me and I've secured at least a safeguard pole with a position. And if I knock him off balance, I get to get a free sweep on someone good. So, are you ready? Bring it on. You're, you're gonna move on this one, okay? I did this to Connor DeAngelis in the gi successfully. Baron bullet him, I didn't get his back, I just came up a blue belt. Okay, because it's just good guard pulling fundamentals. We have attacking with the same side. We have pulling in with a cross collar and kind of what that enables. Okay, I really have to go daily heave off of that right away. What else do we have? Okay. Well, I mean, if, fuck me. If I get a, first off, if I get two sleeves, you are just, you are in trouble. You don't get away from this because I have too many opportunities of attack for takedowns. I can switch arm drags at any point. You can't really do anything about it. I can prevent you from grabbing me just with circular motions, keeping you on the end of your shoulders. But my guard pole is a threat now. <laughs> like, you can just pull into triangles and pull into spider guard elevation, pull to the hip elevations into all of that. And it's going to be the same thing as we talked about earlier with the same side collar. Okay. Well, that's my hunger. Oh, yeah. Okay, uh, a little trick on the, the sleeve grips. So I grab his wrist. I peel it back, okay? Now I have wrist control. I can kind of, do you feel that? I'm kind of controlling where his body goes, okay? Step number two, pull out your gun. I have complete control. Inside grip, if you can, and twist it to the outside, and then start to turn it up, okay? This is how you take black belts and make them nervous because they don't get the same level of resistance anymore. That's a fight he has to win now. Whereas a lot of people grab neutral in the middle, and then you're fighting for the outside with the other guy the whole time. And that's not good, okay? But if I can't choose to go to the inside, I'll grab anything. Not anything, okay? <laughs> but here and here, all right? This upward pressure is important, okay? So whatever he's gonna do, he's probably gonna tuck his elbows and shit. And if he tucks his elbows, I'm gonna go for his hips first. So here, you notice I'm in a stance. It's because I know how to fucking wrestle, and so should you, all right? Here, I'm gonna shoot in. Okay. <laughs> it's all a right. lot of pressure. <laughs> Any elevation at all from somewhere like this should be something good, okay? Because again, he's off the ground. He can't pressure me again until he comes back down. So when I was shooting my hips in, I was pulling him over top of me. And that's what let me make up for the space that I didn't get by getting closer, okay? So it's up here. He's coming in. My legs are loaded up. Whee! I start to lift. And you know, the first thing I went for was Omoplata because he brought his arm to the outside. That's gonna be a for sure attack, okay? But what's fun about stuff like this is that this enables your triangle, especially because you mostly lift with one foot and not two anyways. So when I lift here, I can snap the triangle over his head while he's coming down. Um, I would opt for that one instead of the traditional behind the shoulder one because I didn't have my foot on his bicep to begin with, okay? So it'd be hard for me to shoot this up and then get my other leg back and around his neck. So we do actually adjust a little bit based on what's going on. You can obviously just kind of fly and try with people here. I'm not interested in the flying submissions right now, okay? But there's a lot of times you can pull from double sleeve control just straight into a triangle. What I'm going to do is I'm going to step in close. Because you actually step towards people on this. And right away, as I'm pulling forward, I got my foot in the bicep and immediately started shooting up. And because he had forward momentum from my pull, he's coming into it. Okay? And then you can lock up your triangle because you have your foot in the bicep, it can just go over his neck. So that is a better guard pole. Hold on, we have D1 bird again. Okay? Like I said, he is gonna try to shoot on me if he's smart. Okay? Before I ever touch him, he's gonna shoot. And I have to stop his forward momentum before I can pull. Okay? This is a really bad habit people have. They try to jump into their poles, and bird knows I'm gonna pull, and he knows how to wrestle. All he does is time his level change and shot. That was two points for Bert. 
and he's in my ass right now. He is close enough to threaten a guard pass, okay? So I'm on the back foot in two different ways. What we need to do is, if I know he wants to take me down, okay, um, and I don't feel comfortable reaching out and grabbing him, if you'll notice, in a lot of my matches, when I know the guys want to pull, okay, we'll pretend Bird to the guard puller right now. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna fucking blast you, okay? Uh, go this way. <laughs> he has to, it doesn't matter what side we have this much space, but he has to touch me to pull. He can pull now. And back up. This is gonna be real. We slap hands, I'm coming at you. Two, unless he's Brazilian, and then I probably get nothing. But, you see, they're like, when they reach out for me and I'm not ready, I want to disconnect, and I, wanna, I actually want to dodge it. And you can dodge it, because people are stupid, and they blindly reach, okay? What I mean is they're committed to this motion, regardless of what he does. It's like if I tried to punch Bird's shoulder, and he moved it, I would keep punching it, I wouldn't be able to adjust to it. That's not how you really want to do things. I want to track the shoulder, okay? So it's a problem with his grip fighting, and it's just me taking advantage of the space we still have, okay? I love to get people to reach, and then I get a free entry as long as I can shoot, okay? Now, if he wants to pull, and I want to get my takedown, okay? And we both know what's going on. He knows I'm going to shoot. I know he's going to pull guard. What do we do, okay? For the guy on top, you need to shoot. This sounds obvious. But you need to shoot like a freight train, okay? And you need double and triple shot follow-ups. So what I mean is like, if I go to shoot, he starts to block me, I'm not gonna stop going forward until he actually does something to stop me. Because the moment I'm touching his legs, he can't pull guard without breaking the grip, without giving up two points, okay? And if I have forward momentum, he can't pull guard without stopping it. So, this is the back and forth battle you guys need to think about at a high level. He wants to pull, I want to shoot. Okay. Right. And then, it, like I said, if, I, if he's really good at pulling, and I know he's gonna get good at, first, this is what he needs to do. There's two, two ways you can go about it. Right. <laughs> One, now I'm the guard puller. I want to pull, I know he's gonna shoot. I have to match his stance. There's no reason to get up like this ever. Shoot. Let me... Now you notice what I did. I completely blocked his forward momentum. Then I got, I got my hips away from him so he couldn't make contact with my legs. Then I pulled. But I didn't get a great pull like I would have if I had control of what was happening. That was reactionary. So that is one method to pull against a Wilty Buzzsaw wrestler. Now, if you really want to guarantee a pull, you actually need to shoot on them. Okay, because all the rest of the stuff, it's a skill on skill fight that you, you can lose very easily. You can fight for grips, people shooting, having good takedowns, that's all dangerous. In the sense, not that you get hurt, in the sense that he can win it very easily. So, I'm going to shoot, okay? He's probably going to sprawl on me, or he's going to stuff me. It doesn't actually matter, because whatever he's going to do to stop my shot is contact for my pull. And again, uh, my going from here, okay, there's contact, he's sprawling or blocking me, I've got a contact, and again, I don't just sit, because that much space is too dangerous against a good guard puller who's ready to come forward, okay? I get my hips under him, close to him, legs up on him somewhere, preventing his quick hop around passes, and it goes from here to here. Okay? He, may, he might not come down that much. He might like block you from getting close guard. That wasn't the point. The point is, my hips are under him now. I have a control point. He doesn't get to just freely throw my legs right now. And I can start working towards the guard that I actually want to play without just getting instantly passed. That could be different too. I might actually get deeper on him. I might actually get on his leg. He starts to sprawl. I'm going to sit through the butterfly guard. Okay? You have to have a little bit of dexterity and you have to have a little bit of uh, like decent butterfly guard to not fuck this up. Okay? Because there's a point where you go from your knees here 
to the pole that if I'm too slow and sloppy, he gets to try to jump around somewhere. And I don't want that to happen. So I actually need to keep contact from, I need to go from this pole connection, okay? And I actually need to catch this hook right now because the way he's gonna go is gonna be to my right because he already has a knee on the outside of my knee. So when I pull it in, I need to make sure I get my right knee up behind his knee again, okay, like off in front of his hip, and I need to make sure this catches this. Okay, and then I don't pause. The second I do shit like this, I'm, just, I'm starting to go towards whatever transitions I wanna go for. But you have that shit mapped out already. That's why you drill and break things down into systems. I'm not really gonna talk about jumping guard right now, okay? I'm gonna do something like an entirely separate thing on how to do that better, okay? But on these, someone else. On someone else. <laughs> Maybe. This is just, I just want you guys to not just keep getting past the second you pull or not pull with something in mind. You don't want to play open guard. You don't want to do it. The guard passer, if he's a good guard passer, if you guys are equal skill, guard passer is going to win against guard player here because he can get the first grips and he can do something with them um, just by nature of power sitting. Okay, especially if he puts me on my back first, these legs are just too exposed. And trying to play on your side like this, you know, he's going to be able to get leg and sleeve, which is very fucking dangerous. There's just a lot of ways he can play it right, okay? So we want to minimize the amount of time we are fucking around in open guard. We want to get to a guard, whatever guard you like to play, okay? I don't care which one it is in the gi because most of them are pretty valid in the gi. You have to just be good at it, all right? And then you need to figure out, okay, I like reverse de la Hiba. For example, how do I get to reverse de la Hiba as fast as possible? To not get risk passing here, Okay, and then once I get there, what's the first attack that I can go for? Because I don't want to give him time to think, okay? Keeping momentum going is going to give you the most power. It's going to give you the most fluid transitions, and it's going to minimize his defense. Because time equals frame, and frame equals bad, okay? You'll always have to use more energy. You're always at more risk of fucking up and make, making an opening if he has a good frame, and you have to attack that frame. When you enter right away and then you attack right away, he doesn't really have time to get a good frame. So if I wanted to play reverse de la Hiba, we have to think about what I need. If I want to play it on my, my right leg, you know, I want to hook this, I kind of want that to be the front leg, okay? So generally I'll go from something like a cross collar for reverse de la Hiba. Even a same side collar is good. Even a sleeve grip would be good, okay? Really I'm saying you need a grip, but which one I have is going to change a little bit how I enter, okay? So this is also, um, this. This is just me explaining the thought process that you should apply to the guard you want to play, okay? So if, he, if I wanted to slide in on this leg, he had this leg forward, okay? If I get a grip like this and I spent a little longer being standing up, okay? What am I going to do? I'm going to try to make him step back with this leg, okay? Let's say I get something like this, or if he ties up with me here, and I can get close enough. I really like to do shit like this. And make people step, and then chain off of that. I don't think I'm actually going to hit this fucking sweep on something good. But that step back is enough time. And normally I would put some effort into breaking this grip first because this is a super power position, okay? In fact, I wouldn't let people grab me like this. I really try hard to avoid this, okay? But if it happens and I can't break it, he switches his foot, I need to get closer to him. And there wasn't really much of a halting of the momentum. Though. And that was with the worst possible grip. <laughs> That was same side collar with him having a fucking grip on me too, all right? I didn't really have any advantage there. It was neutral. Now, if I get asleep across collar, okay, I can, I can play defensively here. He has to reach out for me, right? What do we do? We smack that hand, okay? No. <laughs> now, I can slide in for real because I can switch my hip. Now, guess who is not going to have to fight very hard for the win? It's not bird. Bird fucked up. Okay? And you can see how those principles apply. Get to your spot right away. Clean guard pull should be an attempted sweep. But it should be from a guard. Even something like same side collar, foot's on the hip, lips are close. Lifting him from here, it, it's not really a... You don't really have a super, like an established guard yet. 
because I don't have like I don't have a good sleep collar. I'm not on the cross. I don't have to sleep yet. But this is enough to, to lift him, and lifting him gives me all my transitions. Lifting to De La Hiba is great. Lifting to close guard is the way. Okay. Um, lifting and then hooking their leg behind them so they come down into butterfly is really good. So they can get set up and attached. Now they can go. There's just so much you can play with. And this is going to be a little bit of a lecture for about 10 seconds. Take your own jujitsu game into your own hands. Don't wait for people to spoon feed you systems. Okay? Everybody should be able to troubleshoot stuff. Okay? People will be better at this. People might be worse at this. But you can all troubleshoot a little bit. All right? It doesn't, even if someone gives you a system, it doesn't matter until you internalize it and you actually understand why you're getting responses, why that's the way you counter it. You know what I mean? So you can fast track that by doing your own troubleshooting. Okay? And off of a guard pull, like an example would be, I'm, I pull guard poorly, okay? My foot's elongated, it's stretched out, it's on the hip, it's my own point of contact. What's gonna happen? He's gonna pop his hips and he's gonna drag it across or he's gonna jump in Toriano. Why did those two things work, all right? First off, for him to disconnect and drag it, okay? I can pull pretty hard on here, but he can always take his hips backwards a little bit, okay? And that's the problem. You know, I'm not under him, I'm not loaded up. My stretching him out further than this makes my leg vulnerable, okay? And he's gonna take it across. Not even with a drag, maybe you could drag, okay? Mm -hmm. But both ways, they're gonna come across. So if he has enough bearings to just pop his hips backwards, that second where it disconnects, it's now free floating and weak on the outside. Okay. And the reason why his jumping Toriano is going to work right now is because he's going to bring his hips up to the same level as my foot right now. Because my foot's not loaded up to go up, it's loaded up to push away. Okay. And that's the problem. So as soon as he gets up, he'll be able to take all of his weight at one point and then start to put it down and down turns into through. And now I'm on the back foot. And that could have all been prevented by just breaking it down in my head. Look at what happens when you do something. Pay attention in your roles to why stuff didn't work. Do positional stuff, sparring-wise. I don't just drill reps. Reps alone don't really get you mastery of a, a moveset, okay? You need to do resistance, positional sparring type stuff with varying degrees of intensity from your partner, okay? So... How do we avoid those two things? We get our hips under them, we don't overextend, we elevate up instead of out, okay? And that all starts just from troubleshooting. Here, and again, it's because I don't have that sleeve that I'm more likely to do this, and I don't want to end up on the ground with my arm up because if he times a flying triangle or get a mount jump, I'm in trouble. It'll work. That's another thing I'm vulnerable to right now, okay? So I have to, I have to eliminate those options because I've done enough positional sparring to run into those problems and think how do I prevent them instead of how do I fix them after the fact. Now I'm in a much fucking better spot. And by the way, this is usually everyone's first response when you're under them. If they're grabbing you, that's actually just giving you free sleeve grips a lot of the time. Especially with a free floating leg because he can't keep this. Okay, if he hasn't already got my foot off his, his hip, that's his first thing he has to do. And that it gives me time to take this in and actually keep the grip. I strip his grip off, you know? People let people keep the shit for free for no reason. If I wanted to go to De La Hiva, okay? Let's say he, he was really locking his elbows in. Like, something you can do is stretch to make space there, okay? And I'm okay with that foot being a little extended now because I have this one to counter that momentum that way, okay? Foot can circle in, and your leg should be able to break a grip off of you. Unless there's some extra shit going on, okay? And then now that I have this off of me, it's not on my collar anymore, I can keep it on the end of something, the end of a circle, okay? So if he tried to circle his hand in now, oh God. you just keep it out of control. You keep it away from where he wants it. People are strong here, but when it's extended a little, you can just keep circling shit. And again, I would immediately sweep him right now, by the way. I wouldn't have paused and put the leave in and, and then philosophized. I would have... Inverted or done whatever happened to be the optimal move for that exact scenario we were in. Okay, 
create the mental map yourselves. Take it from other people and then create your own with their work and build off of that. Make your own stuff, do what works for you, but also, you know, take the high level stuff the high level people are doing and make that your own. Okay, that's what I'm really trying to say. You need to internalize everything, okay? Anything you want to add about guard point? No. Okay. I... All right. <laughs> and with that said, learn how to fucking wrestle so you don't have to pull guard unless you have to pull guard. Bye. Have a great time. All right, guys, if you've ever wondered how do I manage to pull off some of the ridiculous bullshit that I do, go ahead and check out our instructionals on bgjfanatics.com. We don't hold any information back when we make an instructional. It's everything we actually do. We cover everything from gi and no gi buzzsaw, how to wrestle your way up to victory, how to assert dominance from back control, even to what sweet nothings you should whisper while you're on their back. And don't forget we have what's probably the most successful knee slice system in the world just sitting up there for free, so you should absolutely go check that out. We also have a Patreon account called Wilty Brothers BJJ, where you can help me and Bird as we try to take over the world with our non-toxicity, alright? We currently have five tiers on offer, and those tiers offer things from uh, early access to videos, to rolling commentaries of your own, to perks in the Discord channel if you guys want to jump in. We have like 700 people in there right now. Absolutely should check it out if you just want to get more involved with me and Bird. And don't forget to check out our Instagram at andrewwilty46 for some of those sweet, not quite YouTube friendly content. Currently I'm at about 42,000 subscribers and I think Gordon Ryan has 400,000. So uh, yeah, let's get to work on that. And lastly, don't forget to check out our affiliate channel, Pedago Submission Fighting. They offer some fucking seriously good, high quality production content, almost like the Daisy Fresh documentary you watched on Flow Grappling, okay? Professional editing, lots of heart and soul put into this. If you guys aren't watching that channel already, what the fuck are you doing with your lives? And guys, like always, don't forget to eat your fucking Panda Express.